is. Know the drill. Get one more in here. Howdy, y'all. Welcome to History by Phillips. I'm Mr. Phillips. In this week's lecture series, we'll be going over Manifest Destiny. Now, Manifest Destiny is the belief, the American belief, that it's our God-given right to take over this continent, this landmass. Uh, I'm referring to the United States that you're thinking of right now, the map anyways. Uh, it's our God-given right. Remember, when the Founding Fathers were establishing this country, uh, foundations of this republic. They want it to be a light upon the hill in which the world can look upon. We can be the shining example, be the one good force in this world while we, everybody else struggles. Uh, or want to be the example. Well, along with those same mentalities, it's like, well, if we're going to be this example to the world, and it's our God-given right, we're trying to be examples for God, Surely God will want us to take over this land, man. Surely, goodness. Uh, so you're going to see this start to manifest. This is going to be our de our destiny. A lot of Americans are going to believe in or uh, have these connotations about them. But anyways, this week we'll be talking about four things and four things this week. First, in today's video, we'll be talking about the Oregon countries, the uh, disputes and issues among the Oregon country. Then tomorrow we'll be looking at Florida and Texas. We'll be talking about the Alamo and another Tennessee uh, hero, Davy Crockett, uh, Battle of the Alamo. Remember he said, everybody, y'all can go to hell. I'm going to go to Texas. Here he's referring to the Indian legislation being passed in the Tennessee government as well as the federal government. But we'll be looking at that tomorrow. Uh, we'll also be looking at the war in Mexico itself. Uh, and what lands that we, Americans would claim from that war. And we'll also be looking at California and Utah. They'll eventually become states. Utah, not till after the Civil War because of their religious leanings. But we'll be talking about why folks are starting piling into those two regions. So one, California, there's going to be gold. Uh, there's going to be gold found there. There's gold in them there hills. Unlike Georgia, there's actually gold over that way. Uh, but ironically enough, Ironically enough, the folks looking for gold are not the ones who made bank. It's the ones who actually established business and sold to the gold miners. Uh, we'll talk about that. And Utah starts becoming very populated uh, around the Great Lakes area. Uh, Mormons, the, the American religion, the religion founded in North America. That's what I, what I mean when I say that. Because uh, Christianity it, it comes from the Middle East. Uh, what you call it? Islam comes from Middle East. You got Hindu, Buddhism from the Far East. Uh, Mormonism. It'll be the religion of the North American continent. That's where it start. That's where it's founded. Uh, we'll be talking about Mormons, what they believe in, so on and so forth. And hopefully, we'll be talking about the railroads by then. But uh, anyways, let's get into today's lesson. So today, whoa, changed without me wanting to change it. Whoa, whoa. Pardon me. Let me get some coffee. I mean, see what's going on here. Yes, yeah, so we'll be talking about uh, the Oregon country and the uh, 5440 or fight. Uh, Mr. Young Hickory, uh, Young Hickory, uh, James K. Polk. Uh, not as good as old Hickory, though. Old Andrew Jackson. Mm, I love that uh, lecture from last week. If you haven't checked out le last week's lecture on the, the Jackson era, I love it. I wish we could get into it a little bit more. But anyway, uh, let's get started with the Oregon country. So the Oregon country. Ooh. Did I forget to oh, yeah. There's two things we're talking about uh, in today's lesson. In the Oregon country. One is the rivalry in North America, and number two, Oregon and the idea of manifest destiny, why we ended up pretty much taking this place over. Anyway, when I refer to the Oregon country, I'm referring to this region right here. Uh, this is what we will be called or referring to as the Oregon country. But anyways, uh, rivalry in North America. A lot of folks are claiming Oregon as their own. You got America. They're starting to come in uh, from this way. These Americans, remember the Lewis and Clark expedition, Zebulon Pike, all those guys. There's a lot of folks exploring, paving the way for this. Uh, they'll start trickling in through this way into the Oregon country. Uh, meanwhile, you have Britain. They're still up here in Canada. They'll start trickling in into the Oregon country from this way. Uh, also, Russia. We haven't really talked about Russia, and this probably be one of the few times that we do talk about Russia. But if you know where Alaska is, my map don't go all the way up that far. Uh, but yeah, Russia's creeping in from the north down this way. Then you have Mexico coming in uh, from the south, or Spain, as I should say. Spain coming in 
from uh, what we call Mexico, uh, California, anyways. Uh, but all these folks in these Native, Amer- Native, Native Americans already living here. I think the Lakotas, the Suexes, uh, Casey's, uh, there's no, like, I can't even do it justice how many Native American tribes they are living through here. Uh, but yeah, uh, we'll be talking about the Cayus uh, later in this uh, video. But anyway, I digress. But you have a lot of these folks uh, piling into this region uh, on top of these Native Americans. You got the Russians, you got the British, you got the Spanish, and you got these Americans coming in. Uh, they're all wanting to take over the Oregon country because uh, it's a uh, economically it produces a lot. Uh, you got beaver. You can also have trade to the Pacific Ocean all the way to China. Remember, everybody wants to ch- trade with China because they got those foreign goods, silk, spices, uh, porcelain, you name it. Uh, so Americans are wanting this. So anyway, John Quincy Adams, when he was Secretary of State, uh, he negotiates with Spain, and with Spain they would establish the Adam Onis Treaty, eighteen nineteen. So basically, Spain will set their northern boundary at what in modern day California. Uh, if you know where California is, the northern boundary of that, that's where Spain would mark its territory. So Spain's like, you know what? We don't want it too far out, too much work. Y'all fight over it. Don't matter to us. So they would establish their border right here. Meanwhile, Russia, they're dealing with their own. They have some infighting. Some Russia's starting to catch up with the rest of the world uh, at this point. Uh, they haven't modernized as quick as the American, Spain, and British. So they're they're kind of catching up. But they will uh, for too long. Anyways, uh, Russia kind of sort of loses interest. They'll hang around the Alaska area, uh, mostly instead of down further south. So that leaves uh, Native Americans. They'll always be there. But you have the Americans and the British. Now they'll—they're not wanting to give it up. Neither one of them. Just neither one of them. There's a lot of conflict. They're not going to. It's almost like admitting defeat to your bitter rival. So both of them agree to joint occupation. Uh, joint occupation, or both countries would settle this region. Uh, so you have the British. Uh, Canadians. You have British coming in and you have the Americans coming in. Uh, they're both coexisting at the moment. Now remember, uh, culturally, there's not much of a difference between a British and a British person and an American. Uh, between a Brit and an American. There's really not. Uh, just pretty much government and where they're born. Uh, culturally, these folks are about the same. But anyways, uh, so North America. There's a so, like the Ohio River Valley, this place has a lot of beaver. If you don't remember, babies, beavers like the Gucci of the time, or the Nike, or the, was it, Supreme, or whatever you kids wear these days, I don't know. But it's the name brand stuff everybody wants, especially in Europe. Uh, they, just, they just love beaver fur. Uh, you, very fashionable. Uh, but you'll start seeing a different kind of person coming into Oregon. Uh, we refer to these folks as mountain men. They almost have a mythos to them. Now, these mountain men, uh, mountain men like Kit Carson, Jim Bridger, Jebediah Smith, Jeremiah Johnson, uh, Hugh Glatt, there's numerous. Uh, there's a lot of these mountain men. But anyway, there's, they're different than some Americans. Like, they go and live with the Native Americans. They're marrying Native Americans. Not saying that some haven't before, especially around this region. We did have some intermarriages between uh, Natives and European settlers. But you see it on a more larger scale out in Oregon. Because basically you have these mountain men. They're wanting to get rich or, you know, just get by in life. And they're going by themselves. Uh, it's lonely out there. You kind of, you want that companionship. Not just a mate, but just a, a companionship. So they'll start getting along with these Native Americans, uh, uh, intermarrying with them. Now, they'll start having disputes with Native Americans as well. It wasn't all peace and love. Now, there, now there was some bitter conflicts as well. But these mountain men, they're pretty much getting along with some of these Native Americans. Like They're uh, absorbing some of their culture. They're sharing some of these cu- uh, their culture to them. Uh, but they're starting to, uh, I don't know, exchange ideas, get more familiar with each other. You want to put it that way. Uh but yeah, all these, but all these mountain men coming into the area, uh, it would lead to over trapping. Uh, all of a sudden, beavers just gets hard to trap. Like there's no more. They took them all. Uh, you got, you can't just take and not let it repopulate. It's kind of like how uh, we have hunting and fishing license today, the TWRA. Uh, you can only take so many fish a day or so. Just that's so you don't take all of them out of the rivers. 
Same thing with here. They didn't really have regulations back then. So they pretty much over trapped, not enough beavers, uh, not enough for everybody to make money anyway. So a lot of these mountain men, they start going to Oregon and start establishing farms. Uh, uh, Oregon's pretty good with the rain, so they get plenty of rain. The, uh, the growing season is not as long, but they do have fertile soil over there. Uh, but the ones who didn't become farmers, uh, they would become guides. Uh, people like Kit Carson, Jim Bridger, uh, Jebediah, uh, Jebediah Smith. I always want to put a B in there, even though it's Jebediah Smith. But these folks, they would start working as guides. Uh, so a lot of folks, they're wanting to go out west to start a new life, start over, strike it rich, whatever. But they don't know nothing about going west. A lot of these are yuppies from the northeast that just lost all their money in the market. Or a lot of these are poor farmers or indentured servants finally getting saved up enough money to try to go out west. They don't know nothing about crossing the Great Plains. They don't know anything about crossing the Rocky Mountains. They don't know anything about fighting Indians, which Indian tribes tend to be friendly to white folk, which ones tend to be hostile toward the white folk. They don't know none of this junk. So they'll start hiring folks like Kit Carson, Jim Bridger, uh, D uh, Smith, all these folks. Now, typically, a lot of folks would get their start in a place called Independence, Missouri. But from Independence, Missouri, it was basically the first interstate of the United States, really. Uh, it wasn't really interstate. It's just uh, horse-drawn wagons, ox-drawn wagons. But you start in Missouri. Now, you'd go one of three, one of three ways, really. Uh, if you want to go toward the south, you take the Santa Fe Trail. If you want to go out toward California and the Gold Rush, which we'll be talking about two days from now. Talk about Florida and Texas tomorrow. Uh, if you want to go out toward California and try to strike it rich with the gold, uh, you take the California Trail. But a lot of folks, and you may have heard of this trail, uh, would go on this, the Oregon Trail. There's a famous video game. I'm sure maybe you've heard of it, but a lot of folks, they pack up everything they own and they would just leave and go on the Oregon Trail and hopefully start over, strike it rich. There's many motivations why folks would uh, embark upon this journey. Uh, but yeah, anyways, a lot of folks start going to uh, Oregon. One of the first settlers uh, to get established there would be the Whitmans, uh, Marcus and Narcissa. Uh, I'm pretty sure I just butchered her name. I apologize, ma'am. But anyway, the Whitmans, uh, they would come to Oregon in, I want to say, 1836. Uh, I think that might be a typo. But, yeah, in the late eight, mid to late 1830s, uh, we'll say 1838. That's what I got on the slide anyway. But they was coming as missionaries. They came there, and they would establish a mission. Now, when I say mission, think of, like, a church with a bunch of buildings around it. Like, you might have a church with a cooking area or a church a church and a cooking area and a medical area and an education area it's a bunch of several buildings around a church basically but they those are called missions uh sp very popular especially around uh, the mexico area anyways uh they're missionaries they come there and they're living with the cayuse uh they're living amongst them they're trying to convert them to christianity their uh education uh you name it. They're trying to help the Indians, quote-unquote. Uh, but unbeknownst to the Whitmans, they would bring measles to the Native Americans. Now, remember, the biggest killer of Native Americans wasn't the blade. It wasn't the bullet. No, that it was disease, uh, namely smallpox and measles. Well, the Whitmans, they brought the measles to the KUs. Now, the KUs couldn't make sense of this. All they see is these white folk coming in. And... All of a sudden, their children's getting these nasty bumps. They're elderly. are getting these. Everybody's getting these nasty bumps all over their skin, uh, painful bumps. A lot of folks are dying. Uh, you can say on religious tones, whatever though uh, the KUs believe. I'm not an expert on KU Indians. I don't want to uh, infringe upon their religious beliefs. But the medical knowledge at the time of how measles works was not there, especially going out west on the frontier. Uh, they didn't really understand, so they thought it was otherworldly. Uh, you can say bad spirits, bad juju, whatever you want to call it. But either way you want to look at it, they blamed the Whitmans for this. Uh, so they would end up massacring the Whitmans. I want to say in the 1840s. I should know this. Give me a moment. Anyway, they would end up massacring the Whitmans. Uh, this will just highlight some of the dangers of moving out west. Uh you do it at your own expense. Uh, but yes, they would end up killing your Whitmans and 11 others. Uh, not only was it a, a church area, a churchy place, 
but it's also a rest stop for travelers. Like they'd be, they stop by the Whitman's Mission, sit there, uh, maybe stay a day or two and travel on. Well, the KU Indians, they would end up killing the Whitmans and their family, and 11 other settlers or pastor throughs. Uh, this would enrage some of the Americans. They would eventually get retaliation uh, a few years later. But, uh, yeah, uh, just how that's just how dang, the dangers of going out west were. Uh, I digress. Uh, but anyway, it didn't really stop folks from going out west, so uh, they didn't. People were, I mean, they want to strike it rich, start over, uh, start over, you name it. They just a, a sense of adventure, explore, whatever. Uh, they want to go out west, but keep in mind, you have you're pretty much leaving everything behind. Uh, your friends, your families. It's not like you can send them a text message like, hey, bud, what's up? Or do a Snapchat or all that goofy stuff we do today. You're gone. I mean, you've written your, that part of your life's over. Move on. I mean, you're not going to talk to your best friend. You're not going to talk to your neighbor. You're not going to go uh, down to the local square and hang out with your buddies anymore. That's just not going to happen. Uh, you're gone. Everything that you own and cherish will be packed up in what we name Prairie schooner, uh, pra prairie schooners. Uh, they get that nickname because they look like schooners. A uh, schooner's a boat, uh, but when you had a bunch of these out on the prairies, it looked like a just a bunch of boats. So they got nicknamed the prairie schooners. But a lot of folks would make a mistake when these packing up their prairie schooners. Uh, they're packing up their wagons. I'm gonna say wagons because my enunciation, this is just terrible at it. Let me get this top. But there's a reason why a lot of folks died on the California Trail, Santa Fe Trail, especially the Oregon Trail, because they would pack stuff that they didn't really need. They'd pack up sentimental things like old valuable dresses, old valuable pictures, just stuff that reminded them of home. Well, when you pack that kind of stuff, you don't leave room for stuff that you actually need to live, to actually survive, like food, uh, tools, weapons, uh uh, just provisions for the trip. Uh, so a lot of folks died just because they couldn't plan out how the trip is. They didn't realize how difficult the trip would be. Uh, but it, I digress. But you have tens of thousands of folks moving out west. It start off slow, but once the trails got established, especially these mountain men and guides, uh, and news of gold and just how fertile the Oregon country is, you have tens of thousands flocking from the east to go out that way. Uh, but keep in mind, they had to put everything they had on a wagon. And remember, you either had to choose between stuff that really reminds you of home or stuff that's going to keep you alive on the trail. And it's very hard. It's a lot of difficult decisions you have to make. Uh, I'll let you know right now. If you plan, like if we had to do that trip today, some of you folks that need to take your PS4 or your Xboxes or something, you probably wouldn't make it. You probably wouldn't survive the trail. Uh, you just could, you didn't, if you, need to take food or take clothes or stuff, things of that sort. Uh, but I digress. Uh, I need to quit rambling on about prairie schooners. But anyway, the Oregon country and manifest destiny. Uh, like I said at the uh, beginning of this video, a lot of these folks thought America should be an example to the world. We're the light, we're the light upon the hill. People look to us. Uh, we're the example God wants us to be for everybody. Uh, everybody look at us. God likes us. Be like us. Well, since we're special, it only makes sense that God would want us to take over the rest of the landmass, right? Uh, that's what a lot of folks would start, I mean, believing. Like, yeah, I mean, that makes sense. Uh, why not? We should. Uh, there'd be a newspaper. I won't, I won't say New York. I won't get this wrong. But I, uh, John O'Sullivan. John O'Sullivan. Uh, O'Sullivan. John O'Sullivan. Uh, he's a newspaper editor. Uh, he would dub this as America's manifest destiny or America's God-given right to take over this landmass. Uh, that would become very popular. Uh, so a lot of folks are behind this idea of like, you know, we need to expand out west. We can turn this country into something great, some for everybody great to enjoy, yada, yada, yada. Uh, it's our God-given right. Uh, but it would be dubbed in a New England newspaper by John O. Sullivan. I'll get your name right, sir. Oops. Well, anyway, I digress, but that brings us toward the end of today's lesson. Anyway, uh, Oregon Manifest Destiny. So, the, in the 1844 election, remember this is kind of right after the uh, age of the Democrats. Remember, you had Andrew Jackson and Martin Van Buren. Uh, but then they lost the election to uh, 
William Henry Harrison, but he died, then John Tyler would take presidency. Uh, so basically, the Democrats have been ruling until then. Well, James K. Polk, uh, he's going to run after John Tyler because John Tyler doesn't really want it. Uh, but John, uh, James K. Polk, he is a Democrat. He's like, you know what? Uh, we want this land. We need this land. It's our God-given right. 5440 or fight. Now, when he says 5440 or fight, he's referring to this right here. If you don't remember your latitude and longitude lines, that's what it's referring to. It's referring to this parallel uh, up here at the 5440. Uh, but anyways, uh, it's referring to this line right here. Uh, this is where Americans think the line should be. Meanwhile, Britain's like, uh -uh, nope, that's too far. We're not going to do this. So James K. Polk, it comes to the 1844 election. You have the Democrat Polk versus the Whig, Henry Clay. Now, this is going to be Henry Clay's last two right attempt to become president. Uh, probably the greatest man not to become president. I know some folks might say Hillary Clinton or Ross Perot or something crazy like that. But no, Henry Clay, uh, probably one of the greatest politicians that did not become president. Uh, president as much as he tried and as much as he was involved anyway uh but henry clay he uh, ran for the Whigs. and i remember the Whigs. they don't really have a central platform they just more or less anti-jackson anti-democrat uh but they would lose because uh henry clay didn't really take a strong position on the 5440 or the oregon country territory he's just like yeah just kind of uh, flip flop, well, whiffled it a little bit. He didn't really take a strong stance. Well, meanwhile, James K. Polk, he's like, no, 54 4 your fight. This is ours. We're going to take it. Manifest destiny. It's our God given right. Woo! Americans believe James K. Polk. It's our God given right. Woo! 54 40 your fight. Oh, well, they didn't really fight about it. About two years into his uh, ele or into his presidency, uh, they would come to a agreement with Britain. Uh, they would agree that the boundary would be set here on the 49th parallel. Uh, instead of up here on the 54th, not the 54th, the 40th, uh, on the uh, 49th parallel, I mean, on the instead of uh, up here at the 54th, they would settle here on the 49th parallel. Now, ironically enough, J John Quincy Adams back in 1819, uh, I think it was 1819, uh, or 1820 something, anyway, I digress, uh, but. 1846, let's see here, two, five, so 1825, I do believe. So back in 1825, uh, they kind of negotiated with Britain's like, hey, you want to make this new boundary? And he's like, no, we don't want to. Uh, ironically enough, 21 years later, in 1846, uh, Britain finally agreed to make this the boundary. Uh, and that's the boundary that we know uh, today. Uh, this will become modern day Oregon. We eventually get Montana, Idaho, all those countries, or not country states out of it. But yeah, uh, James K. Polk, he ran on the platform, 54 40 year fight. Uh, he's wanting to take the Oregon country. Meanwhile, you had Henry Clay, who didn't really take a strong position. Uh, James K. Polk wins because uh, he's going to take the Oregon country along those beliefs of manifest destiny and westward expansion. Uh, about two years to his presidency, a year and a half, two years. Uh, he would come to a, an agreement with Britain, and they would agree to set the boundary at the 49th parallel. Uh, this would eventually become Canada. Uh, this would become Oregon. And this has been the Oregon country. Uh, a lot of folks are coming, coming into, it to, uh, into this area. Uh, tomorrow we'll be talking about uh, Texas and Florida. We'll be talking about Davy Crockett. Woo! Davy, Davy Crockett. Uh, but I digress. Uh, but this has been History by Phillips. I've been Mr. Phillips. Uh, but, uh, children, don't forget to come to study block today. But till next time, till uh, tomorrow, take care and peace.